What if I told you that in just three weeks, you could be running 48 seconds faster per kilometer or 78 seconds faster per mile without any increase in effort? And this particular method I'm about to share with you, no one is talking about. That's right, in preparation for this, I watched every video I could on running faster without getting tired. And all the advice was generally the same. Don't run too fast and learn to run slow. Learn how to run efficiently. In other words, finding your optimal cadence, which is the amount of steps that you take per minute. And lastly, focusing on rhythmic breathing. For example, during your easy runs, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And to be fair, I recommend these tips too. In fact, I've done videos myself explaining the same tips. But these are only tips for when you are actually running. But the researchers of this study prescribed simple exercises you can do at home, even days before your run, that will still make running feel easier. Here is the proof. The researchers took 21 participants and randomly assigned them to either a control group or an intervention group. All participants then underwent a treadmill test where they self-selected a treadmill speed that perfectly matched their four out of 10 effort. They then ran at this speed for five minutes before self-selecting another pace that matched their seven out of 10 effort. After everyone completed the tests, the control group continued with their regular training while the intervention group were taught how to do various yogic breathing exercises. And after three weeks, all the participants came back and repeated the same treadmill test. And obviously there was no change in the control group, but check out the improvement in the intervention group. So for the four out of 10 effort, the ones who did the three weeks of breathing exercises went from a six minute 19 pace to a five minute 31 pace. That's 48 seconds faster per kilometer or 78 seconds faster per mile. And a seven out of 10 effort shaved 28 seconds off their kilometer splits, which is the same as about 45 seconds per mile. Effectively, running faster without getting tired. I'll go through these magical breathing exercises in a second, but first it's important we learn why they work. You may not think about it this way, but your chest uses muscles in between and around your rib cage to suck air in and push air out. In fact, research has shown that those same muscles are subject to fatigue while running a marathon. And when they are fatigued, you naturally take shallow breaths and this leads to a decrease in performance. So while we spend so much time training our legs for these races, shouldn't we spend some time strengthening our lung muscles to one, be stronger, and two, have more endurance? That way we can be more effective at transporting oxygen and can run faster and longer without getting tired. Especially since we have direct evidence showing that the same breathing exercises I'm about to share with you can increase how much air you can push out and how much air you can pull in. Now you've seen the proof and the reasoning behind it. Let's break down the exact breathing protocol so you can start doing these at home and get the same results. The runners were taught three different breathing exercises. The first is called three part breathing, which helps to deepen the breath and improve lung capacity. Here's what you do. Find a comfortable seated position with a tall posture and rest your hands on your knees or in your lap. The first of the three parts is abdominal breathing, slowly breathing in through your nose, allowing your stomach to expand, and this fills the lower part of the lungs. Hold your breath for a short moment before then filling in the next section of the lungs by expanding the rib cage out to the sides and upwards. Again, pause for a short moment before then filling in the top of your lungs by feeling the upper chest rise and widening the collarbones. After all the sections are full with air, Hold the breath for a comfortable duration, being mindful not to strain, and then release with a slow, smooth, controlled exhale. Make sure you exhale completely and remove all the stale air in your lungs. The participants of this study did this for 10 minutes, but feel free to start at two to five minutes and each day add one minute until 10 minutes is achieved. As a side note, your breathing should always remain at a comfortable pace and never forced or rushed. If you feel dizzy or uncomfortable, return to your normal breathing pattern. So this three-part breathing is designed to improve your overall lung capacity, but the next two techniques are designed to build muscle strength. Here is how the second breathing exercise works. 
Get into the same position as before, but begin by exhaling forcefully through the nose while contracting your abdominal muscles. The movement is from the lower belly, so visualize pulling your belly button towards the spine as you exhale. Follow this with a natural, effortless inhalation. The belly should expand as the air flows back into your lungs and continue with this process in a rhythmic fashion. Start slowly and gradually increase the pace. And as you become more comfortable, eventually you wanna to get to each cycle being quite rapid and short. The paper mentioned performing this for 10 minutes, but I would say start with one round of 20 to 30 breaths, then recover and repeat that for about five minutes. With enough practice, you can gradually build up to 10 minutes. And because this is quite intense, I'll say this again, if you start to feel dizzy or lightheaded, stop immediately and return to normal breathing. This technique is also best practice with an empty stomach, so wait at least a few hours after eating. And finally, we have the third technique. But before I dive into the specifics, if you wanna keep up to date on the latest research that include practical tips to improve your running, then hit subscribe and become a Run Smarter Scholar. With this third breathing technique, both the inhalation and exhalation are active and forceful. Inhale forcefully through the nose, expanding your lungs and chest fully. Immediately follow this with a forceful exhalation contracting your lungs and diaphragm to expel the air. The rhythm should be quick with equal lengths, inhalation and exhalation. Start at a slow pace around about one or two cycles per second and gradually increase the speed as per your capacity. Now for the important part, how often do you need to do these to see the same results as these participants? The overall dosage that was set was really high and all the runners had to complete 10 minutes of each of these breathing exercises six days per week for three weeks. That sounds intense, but when you think about it, it probably requires about three weeks in order to build muscle strength. But as with any other muscle in the body, strength is hard to gain, but easy to maintain. So while you don't need to be as extreme as the participants in this study, you can do an initial strength building phase and do these exercises for 15 to 30 minutes in total, maybe four or five times per week. And once the strength has been established, you can choose to back off kind of like a maintenance phase and do them one to two times per week. But before you go away and start doing these exercises, one thing that I highly recommend is doing a simple lung capacity test beforehand. And that way you can retest after this three week strength building phase and can record any noticeable improvement. It's called the BOLT test or the body oxygen level test. And it takes less than 60 seconds without any equipment. And you can learn exactly how to do it in this video right here. So click on it, click on it now, and I'll see you there.